Hey there FosTube, this is Alma coming to you from Long Beach, California. Today is Saturday, February 29th of the year 2020 and this is FosTube number 9. So welcome everybody to my channel. Welcome back to all you returning viewers and subscribers. Thank you as ever for your continuing support. And if you're new to my channel then welcome. Happy to have you. Um, I hope you, have, you find a reason to stay. Uh, to like and subscribe and continue to follow me on my stitching journey. Um, this week was definitely a week. <laughs> um, it is leap day, leap day 2020. We have an extra day in February and I am making the most of it. Um, but this week was definitely a little bit different. I had a lot of errands to run, a lot of things to do after work. So I found that I did not get as much stitching done as I usually do. And once I, um, I saw the statistics, I have an, an Excel spreadsheet where I keep track of um, my, my stitch counts for daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, I found that this week was actually the lowest, um, the least amount of stitches I've done since I started keeping track um, towards the beginning of the year. Um, I barely made it to 1,200 stitches, but I thought it's okay. Um, you know, I kind of just shrugged it off. Um, I will catch up eventually. We are only, you know, we just finished two months out of the entire year, so I'm not necessarily going to stress about it. Um, especially because again, like I had so many things to do, and I don't think I mentioned that in my last video, but I was actually sick last weekend. Um, and so this week was also kind of just shaking the bug off. Um, so there was a lot of sleeping <laughs> involved as well. Um, so again, I just, I just didn't um, particularly, I, I didn't take myself too seriously. I didn't blame myself too much for not stitching as much. I will just catch up later. Um, but I was able to get around to doing the weekly um, uh, weekly tasks for my Facebook groups, both Magical Stitches um, and Enchanted Stitching. Uh, for Enchanted Stitching, we are on the last week of Frozen February. So every month we have a, a movie, a Disney movie theme. So um, February was Frozen. Next month will be Pirates of the Caribbean. So we're, you know, we're towards the end of the movie. The, the tasks that we had to do were we had to fix, um, work on a piece that was a fixer upper piece because of the songs that the troll sing about um, both Kristoff and Anna. We had to also do a task for a piece that betrayed us in one way or another. Either, you know, you've been frogging a lot or it was just more complicated than you thought it was. So just any way that you can adapt the prompt to the piece, um, anything goes. Uh, and we also needed to work on a piece that we were rushing to finish. So for all of those three tasks, I used um, my Thomas Kincaid piece, uh, which is the Tinkerbell and Peter Pan Fly to Neverland. This is the MCG textiles kit. Um, these are no longer available, so there are a few left out there, but that's it. Um, this is my oldest whip. Um, I started this back in 2013. So um, how I adapted it to the prompts was um, when I did start it in 2013, um, I didn't know any better and I used masking tape to um, secure the edges of the fabric, which left a huge mark that I'm going to have to deal with when I frame the piece. Um, so that is why it's a fixer upper, right? I'm gonna have to make do. Um, and then for the betrayal prompt, um, the colors that actually came with the kit, the floss that came with the kit, the blues on my, on my project are vastly different. They are darker and more, they have like a more greenish tint to them. And 
for me, like that's important. Like if I'm going to look at a product image, that is what I see, that is what I like, and that that's what makes me buy a piece. So especially if you're buying a kit and the kit itself has the wrong colors, like for me, that's not, that's not okay. <laughs> um, I was very sad and very disappointed because I have seen people working on this and their their colors are fine like theirs are more true to the to the product image so yeah so i did buy um i do have another one of these um kits i bought the vignette for the the fantasia piece so it's just sorcerer mickey um so i will stitch that up because i bought it um and i'm just you know hoping that this doesn't happen again and I also um, used it for the brush to the finish prompt because um, for whip go, the, f the focus was to finish 30 rows, which would bring me to a page finish. And it was the last week of February, so I had to, I had to make sure that I, get, I got that done. And overall, I really want to finish this piece before June, before it, it's birthday. <laughs> um, and I'm very happy to report that I met the goal. So we have a page finish. Woohoo! I was very excited because um, I was um, calcul as I was calculating the amount of credit I would receive for this for um, Stitch from Stash. Um, I had one of the admins help me out. Um, but I realized that the next time I claimed credit for it, it would be because it was a true finish. It would be an actual finish. So the focus for this week was um, once again over here where um, where Tinkle Bell is. So I was finally able to go ahead and fill in her arms and her hair. Um, her dress does go into the next page, so that's going to be coming soon. But. I also worked on this section right here and I just loved those colors, loved those light purples and teals and I hope it goes, it continues <laughs> a little bit more because um, I enjoy working on that section a lot. Um, so yeah, so I was very excited to finally hit, it's actually going to be a little bit more than 75% because I didn't account for the fact that I had already done this section right here so it might be something like 77% or something I don't know but here it is I'm very excited because it, it's just one of those things like it looks like I will be able to meet the goal of finishing um, before June because I will continue to work on this I'll try to get at least one prompt per week for this um, so that'll that'll give it at least 250 stitches um ideally it would probably do more um okay i i did calculate it again and um if i were to finish before the end of the year before the end of 2020 i would need to do um 400 stitches a week so i figured um 200 stitches a week would probably be okay to finish for the summer i think we'll see <laughs> I can, I'll adapt if I need to st uh, stitch more, but I am still using it for the ultimate stitching tasks in Magical Stitches, and those are in 500 stitch increments, so who knows. Um, I think I will be able to, to take care of that at least. Um, so those were um, three of the prompts. Um, there was a fourth one. I think that I didn't really get to this week. Um, I may get to it today. We have one more day left of February. So um, um, it lo uh, the last one is a whip I love. So I'll see what I can stitch on. <laughs> um, actually, I do know what I'm gonna stitch on. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, another piece that of course got some work done this week is um, my Hogwarts castle piece. And this is the the image that was charted by Stitching Girl on Etsy. She no longer has this available in her Etsy shop, unfortunately. Um, again, this was just one of the 
one of the older patterns that I bought ages ago and I didn't actually get around to starting it until like three or four years after I bought it because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> um, it didn't get that much work done. Um, I just um, finished the remainder of this column and started stitching the next column. Um, I think overall, I have notes. Um, so overall the entire month, this piece got 2,800 stitches in. Um, Cause again, this is one of my, um, um, one of my goals this, this year, it's just one of my main focus pieces. Originally, I did want to finish it this year, but I saw very quickly that I was not going to be able to do that. Um, and then I decided it's okay, I'll just hit 100,000 stitches. The entire piece is 122,000, so I thought, okay, let's knock off those 22,000. And even then, um, I was, I was, in order to be keep, keep up with that goal, I would have had to do 1,000 stitches per week. So one of the things I did do, because it is the end of the month, um, I do recalculate um, the weekly stitches that I need to get done on each piece in order to meet the, the goals for each um, whip. Uh, and I knocked off another 20K, just because I was just stressing out so much over doing a thousand stitches per week. And that's difficult, like especially when there's other whips that I want to work on. It was a very difficult goal to keep um, last week it worked out because Magical Stitches had one prompt, so you had to do a thousand stitches on one, on one whip. So of course I used um, Hogwarts, but other than that, it was it was really hard. Um, it, it was a very lofty goal. So I just knocked it down to 80K, which cut my stitches, my stitching stitches in half. Um, I, I would only, I would only <laughs> need to do 500 a week on this for the remainder of the year um, in order to meet the goal of 80K. So I think I could do that, um, especially because this is one of the um, the easier pieces to work on since it, it is a lot of black. Um, I can just pop in a movie. I'm watching Outlander right now. Very good show, highly recommend. Um, so I just pop, you know, pop it on the TV and I can just stitch on this. And before I know it, you know, I, I have like 200 stitches done. So I think 500 a week will be, I'll, I will be able to um, take care of. Hopefully, um, hopefully I don't intend on lowering my goal anymore. Um, I think 80K will be, um, will be doable since I only have to, only have 20,000 stitches more to go. Actually, 20,800 stitches more to go. It's almost 21. Um, but I think I should be able to do it, especially because when I do calculate the weekly stitches, I tend to round up to the nearest um, uh, uh, integer of 50. Is that how you say it? Um, yeah, so if it's anywhere between like, you know, 60 and 90 I'll, I'll just round it to the next one so for for Hogwarts um I don't remember specifically what the actual uh number was but I just rounded it up to 500 which in itself gives me wiggle room um so again I think I, I should be able to do it um another piece that I did start to work on this this week um is the new year new start so uh this 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 last week i kind of realized like i've been neglecting a lot of the projects that i that i started or that um i was really focused on for a little bit and then i just neglected um and one of the first ones that came to mind was um, a new year new start which was bilbo's home Oh, let me just go ahead and take this out. We don't have to worry about glare. So this is Bilbo's Home by Mandarin Designs. Um, 
I this was my new year new start this year and I put in like a hundred stitches on it and that's it <laughs> um and that was like within the first week of January and then I, I haven't picked it up ever since so I thought you know the entire point I remember when I chose this piece I remember thinking it was a smaller piece because I actually wanted to finish my new year new start for once um, I think the last time I did a new year new start I used um, my Aframoff piece the hate piece which is massive so I thought okay this year I want to pick a piece that I actually have a chance of finishing before the year ends so um, so I did work on it a little bit this week um, and I think I'm up to 500 stitches now um, the pattern is partially compatible with Pattern Keeper. Um, she does use a lot of blends. Um, part of the reason why I adore her work is because she, the way she works with color is incredible. Um, she uses really vibrant, um, just bright colors. Um, and of course, some way, you know, in order to achieve that, um, she does use a lot of blends. So with Pattern Keeper, um, it doesn't fully, so it recognizes the symbol and it recognizes the two s colors, but it, it, it kind of recognizes them separately. So I had to manually go in and add the blends to each symbol. Um, so, so I'm still able to use Pattern Keeper for this, which is great. It's a, cause again, it's just, it's so much easier to keep track of your stitches that way. Um, but I just had to do it manually. Like I had to edit it manually. Um, but yeah, like again, some kind of tilting this so you can see those purples. Um, it's 154 blended with black at one point or another. Um, so yeah. I don't know what I was thinking when I was cutting the fabric for this. I did not give myself any room essentially for my margins as I normally do, which is ironic because I just did a video tutorial on how to start your pieces. <laughs> uh, so don't do this. This is an example of what not to do, kids. Oh my goodness. So I'm essentially forced to work on this uh, stitching in hand as opposed to using a Q-snap or a hoop because it's so close to the edge. Um, for this one, this is actually going to be a little bit of the loftier goals. Um, for this one, I do have to do 23,000 stitches this year, um, which will, the weekly stitches is 550 stitches per week. Um, but this was actually one of the numbers that was called for WIPCO. Um, on the 27th of each month, um, Jesse Marie uh, uploads a video uh, with the numbers for the following uh, month. So towards the end of the month, you get the numbers for the new month so that you can go ahead and start planning ahead and kind of organize yourself. Um, so I was very happy <laughs> uh, when she called out um, the number that I had um, slotted for um, for Bilbo's home. So this month she called out um, 18. That is 18, right? Yeah, 18 and 24. So I had Bilbo written in for, for 18. So I was like, oh, what a lucky coincidence. Like, it's great. <laughs> um, and then for the 24, this entire row, uh, yeah, row of slots is empty or was empty for me and that was to allow for new starts. So um, since she did call out 24, I went ahead and I wrote in change of seasons, which is my leap day start. Um, so obviously um, for those for the, the goals that are actually for the month for Bilbo is going to be 2,000 stitches, um, which again is the equivalent of about 500 stitches per week, which is almost what I have to do anyways. 
Um, and for change of season, since that is a new a new start, um, I just gave myself a thousand stitches this month. Um, Cause I really, um, I really wanted to just enjoy this piece. I originally wasn't even going to include, include it in Whipco, but I wasn't about to start a new piece either. <laughs> so since she did call out one of the empty slots for me, I just thought, all right, I'll just write in change of seasons since I'm already starting it anyways. So this is a Mystic, a mystic Stitch uh, chart. And I'm working on this with um, Zakia of Ladywing Designs. So I've been itching to start this since like November. <laughs> um, November or early December, I forget, when I initially reached out to her like, hey, we should do a piece together. Um, and I remember I, I had originally like hoped, because um, I asked her when she wanted to start it. I asked her when she thought she'd be able to um, have a new start. And she was the one that said March or yeah, March. So I remember being like, oh, okay. Cause I was hoping for her to say, let's start it in the new year, um, like January 1st. Um, and she didn't. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm finally able to stitch on it. And I, I if you saw um, my Instagram story earlier today, then you'll see like, I woke up, I happened to wake up early today, woke up at like 8 a.m. So I went ahead and started it. Um, so yeah, so I think I have a little under 100 stitches. I didn't get that much done this morning before I decided to start filming. Um, but um, I will go ahead, like, I'll be, I'll be honest, you know, like it's with both um, this one and Bilbo, I won't count the the stitches that I've done so far. I will start from scratch and just start counting the 1,000 for this one and the 2,000 for Bilbo tomorrow, which again, I don't mind because that just means more stitching on it, get more things done. Um, but that is it for me in terms of stitching wise uh, this week. Again, um, not that much got done this week just because of life happening. Um, I did pull up some statistics for those of you that did, do like that kind of thing, especially because it is the end of the month. Um, so wrap up of um, the stitching progress for February. Um, the Obviously the big... Um, the big pieces this month were Hogwarts, Peter Pan, Lilac Evening, um, and Snow Girl, all of which got over 2,000 stitches in. Um, Hogwarts got 28,000, Peter Pan got 27,000, or 2700. 2800, 2700. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, no, I'm not stitching 20k monthly. Um, Snow Girl got 2,300 and um, Lila even got a little bit under 2,200. So again, those were, um, and that makes sense because I do remember working on them pretty much on a weekly basis. Um, Snow Girl does get about a, a 500 stitches a week. Not this week, oops. Um, and next up, uh, June and Esmeralda got 1100 stitch stitches each. And then another pieces that I worked on were stacked teacups, which got 765 stitches done. Um, pretty much all of them were half stitches though. So is it really seven, like it's 765 symbols in the chart. So if you wanna cut it in half, then go ahead and do it. Um, but I'm just doing it based off of on the pattern, based off on completion. The, um, what percent I got finished. Um, and then of course, um, Veronica got 500 stitches done, the Mirabilia that I started, um, which I'll continue to work on this month because um, several groups that I'm in in Facebook are doing a Mirabilia March focus. So I will continue to work on her a little bit. And then um, the teacup display that I'm working on got a little bit, um, over 300 stitches in. 
So the pattern seems to be that whenever a piece is a, a whip go focus piece, it kind of tends to be <laughs> um, pushed to the side for a little bit. Um, both because um, well, Snow Girl was one of the focuses on January as well, and that one I did keep going. But for the teacup display, I went all in in January and then in February just. So there's that. <laughs> Take it for what you will. Um, but as I mentioned, um, uh, I did kind of do a recap of my goals just to again just adapt as I um, realize what goals were actually achievable and which ones were not. And pretty much um, the pieces that I'll have to work on a lot uh, to get done are Hogwarts, Peter Pan, Moon Charmer by Hayde, uh, Moon Charmer by Amy Stewart, um, the change of seasons, so um, the, the leap day start, um, and Bilbo's home. So, um, change of seasons, the goal, since it is a leap day start, the goal is to finish it by the next leap day, by the next um, February 29th. So I have a year to do a quarter of the piece, which I thought would be no problem. And then I did the math and it turns out that I would have to do 950 stitches a week in order to meet that goal. So I cut down my goal for Hogwarts. <laughs> I cut it down to 500 stitches and then this came along and pretty much replaced the 1000 weekly stitch goal, which again, I'll, I'll, I'll adapt, I'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it that way because that, is, that was the purpose of leap, the leap day start. Um, who knows, maybe next year I will work on things differently and I'll be able to focus on that piece and I'll be able to, you know, either catch up if I didn't meet the goal. As I should mention, I'm, I'm basing it off of um, the yearly mark will be February. So like I have to stitch a quarter of the piece by the end of February next year. So it's not the end of end of the year, like December. Um, but then besides that one, the next one that has the heftier goal is um, the Moon Charmer hate piece that I have. That one I want to f uh, hit 50,000 stitches. Um, not necessarily to do them in the year, but just hit that benchmark. And to do that, I have to stitch um, 26,000 more stitches which comes out to be about 650 stitches a week. Um, so I, and again, I haven't really touched that piece a lot. Um, so I will have to, I may just incorporate it into my stitch goals or the weekly stitching or the monthly stitching challenges, which um, I find that that is a good way to keep up with these goals. Next step would be the Hogwarts piece. Again, I cut down. I cut it down to just reach eighty thousand stitches. Um, I have an, um, a little under twenty-one thousand to go, which is five hundred stitches a week. Um, besides that, we have Peter Pan. Um, I want to finish that piece, so I have fifteen thousand five hundred stitches to go, which comes out to be about four hundred stitches a week. Um, and I've also calculated the the um, weekly stitches goals for for the rest of my full coverage pieces, but they're not as hefty. Like some of them are 150 stitches a week, 200. So those five are just the ones that are going to be a little bit harder to keep up. But um, we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll just, again, I'll just um, kind of accept that some goals I may not reach, you know, like change of seasons. But I'll, I'll also keep in mind, especially for change of seasons, like I'll also keep in mind that I do have four years to stitch it. So if this year I don't happen to meet the goal, I do have three more years to catch up um, and keep up. <laughs> um, so I won't be too hard on myself. Um, 
besides that um i do have one thing one more thing too so it is sleep day um and that that came with a surprise sale from michelle um, from heaven and earth designs um she is having a 54 percent off uh sale on charts only from now until i think like march 3rd so you already know <laughs> um i've talked about this a little bit um throughout my videos since i started planning it um tess from tess stitches is um starting a birthday start for her birthday in june so we wanted to do um, Anna Dittman's July. And when we started planning on it, neither of us had the pattern yet. We just both fell in love with the piece. Um, <laughs> and so when the announcement came that there was a 54% off sale, I tagged her and I was like, our time has come because we were literally talking about it and we both decided to wait to buy the chart until there was a sale either 50 percent off or um which they don't come off and i think if anything there's sometimes there's 30 percent off sales um we both started talking about when the sale might come so i remember like throwing ideas out like maybe it's going to be a valentine's day sale which i think there was um and then thought maybe there's going to be a saint patrick's sale in march um but then I remember thinking, like, if anything, there's there's got to be a Memorial Day sale. Um, and then this happened. <laughs> she surprised us all with a with a leap day, um, leap day sale. So of course I had to go ahead and buy it. So this is July. Artwork by Anna Dittman. Um, she does have several of these month pieces. Um, up on the website there's um february and august and december um so now i have two i have Ju june and july so tess from tess stitches and i will be starting this towards the end of june for her birthday so this was the last ding to my credit and stitch from stash um, but that's okay because I'm still in the black. I'm still in the, I'm still in good standing. Um, I think I have like 13. I think I was left with $13 in my budget for uh, February and then March. Um, you get a, um, I, I gave myself $15 budget per month. So I'll have, I'll have that as well. But yes, that is it for me. Um, again, uh, some things got done this month and other, th other things didn't. Um, I'm very, very excited about um, March, just in general, um, for the focus pieces for Bilbo, um, Change of Seasons, um, and focusing on the Bihara Beauty as well. So um, yeah, hopefully, I think since I am excited about it, I really hope I do get things done on the pieces. Um, but we'll see and um, we'll see what the the weekly and monthly challenges for magical stitches and enchanted stitching bring and see how that helps out my goals um so until next time guys thank you for joining me on this lovely saturday morning um i hope you have a very good and restful weekend and then the next the week ahead is fruitful and as ever that there's lots of stitching time so until then happy stitching guys bye